YouTube, welcome back to another video. I'm Orvi from Weebs and Weights, and tomorrow, Attack on Titan does come back. But first, we're gonna review those OVAs that went out. So if you missed it, Attack on Titan released eight episodes of OVAs of some canon things, some randomness, and we're gonna go through each one of those, and we're gonna give them a little rating, and we're gonna see what you guys think. So warning, there is some spoilers, so if you haven't yet already, make sure you go and watch them. Maybe this will get you to go and watch them beforehand. They're easily bingeable, and there's every single one of them had a good storyline to them, and they were really, really good. This episode was called Distress. This is arguably the worst of all the OVAs. Um, this doesn't really add anything to the anime or to the storyline whatsoever, but it does have a good side story. It kind of gives us a little bit more of a look into when they were all still cadets and still in training. Now, even though this isn't important to the storyline altogether, it's still a really good side story and it still brings characters back who we've loved and lost like Marco and they put them right in our face. The plot line of this episode is that it takes us all the way back to when everyone was innocent and still in the 104th cadets. They're put on a training mission where, where huh, we kind of get to relive a little bit of Eren's annoying, edgy season one self. Um, and him and John kind of yelling at each other all the time. That's when they get ambushed by bandits, they get their ODM gear stolen, and like normal, Krista gets abducted and... You see where this is going? Eren being Eren and really not having, you know, a, a, a strict rule set to follow, decides that he wants to chase after them and try to save Krista, which, I mean, I agree with. Does he put everyone at danger? Yeah, but that's Eren for you. The whole group decides to follow suit. They all stand up, power of friendship style, and they're like, we're coming with you, Eren. And it's really cool because you get to see the highlights of some of the characters that either have been put off to the side or we've lost along the way. And it kind of highlights some of their unique abilities and shows how close the group kind of really was. Now, this episode is a little bit out of the norm. It's kind of got a happy-go-lucky feel to it all together, even though, you know, there was bandits that kidnapped them and their stuff. It doesn't make them out to be horrible people. It's just showing like they're doing whatever they can to survive and do whatever they can for their families, which is a really nice touch that they added that. Overall, I'm gonna give it a four out of seven Dragon Balls. Next on the list is the episode called The Sudden Visitor. This one is 100% a humor parody based episode. It goes on the complete 180 of what Attack on Titan is as a vibe. And it was kind of a nice little touch. It has nothing to do with the story again whatsoever. But this one's interesting because they kind of go full food wars on this one. And there's a cooking battle. We're still back in the time where they're in cadet training and they're learning to use the ODM gear. They're inside one of the town walls and they're going after the big, you know, Titan cardboard cutouts that they're going to teach them how to kind of cut the napes of their neck. This one focuses a lot on Jean and like his internal struggle and his growth and his very kind of sad obsession with the military police and trying to live an easy life. Basically, it all starts at the end of one of the training sessions when him and Sasha are getting into a huge shouting match and... <laughs> A drunk, happy, hungry Commander Pixis shows up and basically says, you guys look ridiculous, settle this with a cooking battle. And he guess, <laughs> guess who's gonna be the judge? That cheeky bastard. So basically he tells them, you gotta get your own ingredients, you gotta cook me something, and tomorrow night you're gonna serve it in front of everybody, I'm gonna eat it, I'm gonna judge it. There's some insight with Jean's relationship with his mother and how much he actually does care for her, but how he was kind of being an ass and all this other stuff, and it comes full circle. But I think this could have been like the story of like how the turning point happened for him, where he makes him a more likable man that we know now. Although this doesn't fit that vibe of Attack on Titan, it's a nice change of pace to have something that's still explaining stuff with the past and some of the characters that we know and love and still maintains the AOT trainee feel to it. And this one is full of really decent, really quality humor that fits the characters individually. And there's a moment with Pixis that's absolutely hilarious. Solid four and a half out of seven Dragon Balls on this one. 
Now, another episode in the series was called Ilse's Notebook. And this episode was absolutely phenomenal. Phenomenal. So this is the only one of the OVA episodes that was actually featured in the manga itself, but it never made it to the TV runs until now. Why wasn't it in the original run? Too many hints, probably. There's a lot of things that happen in this, which we'll get over, that kind of might have ruined the flow of the anime and how they wanted to release it and kind of present it to us on TV. The plot of this episode was basically that Hanji wanted to start trying to capture Titans. So we're back still when they're in cadets, they're still doing the things like that. And Hanji and everyone's going out on the scouting missions and she wants to start capturing them. But every time they've done that in the past, they've lost way too many people and way too many soldiers. So she keeps getting no's, especially from Erwin. And there's an opportunity when they leave the wall again and she just goes absolute rogue and goes in one direction, starts chasing them. Erwin sends Levi after her. When Levi finally saves her butt, they find a notebook with a tree that had a dead soldier's body in it. So they found this notebook left by by Ilse Lagnar, and the whole time she was writing down information about the Titans and her experiences all the way up until she got killed, literally in the mouth of a Titan, and it just stops. So needless to say, this episode 110% fits the Attack on Titan vibe from beginning to absolute end. She goes into depth on how she was able to communicate with a Titan, which is the Titan that they ran into, and how it was saying Ymir's people and kept calling Ilse Ymir. You see where like there was, there's too many leaks in this episode, especially how early it would have been in the season to kind of show off that Ymir might have been a Titan Transformer kind of person? So needless to say, this episode adds a lot of context to a lot of the older episodes now. So things are starting to kind of tie together. Should this have been added into seasons before? I don't know. Will it be added to DVD releases and special collector's editions? I think so. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. Solid five and a half Dragon Balls out of seven. Now, the next two episodes that I'm going to be talking about are by far my two favorite out of all out of all the OVAs. They're both fighting for that number one spot. No regrets. If you didn't love Levi before, you have no excuses after this one. This goes into the backstory of Levi and how he joined the Survey Corps in the first place. This episode delves into Levi's past and his criminal past of him being in the underground cities and stuff like that. And his friends, Farlon and Isabel, and how they taught themselves how to use ODM gear basically to increase their style of living, even though it was very slight. We also get to experience a very caring side of Levi that we kind of always knew existed because of how he interacted with the cadets and how he had like that tough love with them. But you get to see it on a more almost intimate level. We see the love and care that he has for his friends. We see that being reciprocated by them. And it's done beautifully in a very short amount of time. They're really able to kind of do a very quick character development with Farlon and Isabel and some of the other people that you see in a way that they never really are able to do in a show. So it was really cool to see. So for a short amount of time on screen, I mean, plus 10 Levi. The three of them end up getting captured by Erwin, who forces them to join the Survey Corps after seeing their use of ODM gear and questioning them on how they even learned how to do that. And once he found out that they did it themselves, he basically gave him two choices, jail or worse, or join me. But there was a twist. They had got hired prior to this and warned that he was coming for them by a corrupted nobleman. Surprise, Tack on Titan. We really get to see and watch how Levi starts to trust Erwin. He loses his friends and we get to see him go berserk in another almost unique way as when he was fighting the Beast Titan. And it's really scary and really impressive. The Titan that they use in this episode kind of really highlights even more how dangerous and effed up their lifestyle was. This one gets six out of seven D-balls, Dragon Balls. Never call them that, ever, please. And last but not least, the episodes for Lost Girls. Now, when it comes to characters in the series that I really wanted to understand and really get to know more, but they never did anything with, Annie at the top of that list. We understand how like Reinar and Berthold felt about their mission inside the walls and what they needed to do, but Annie was always so stoic and quiet, and now she's a friggin' Titan popsicle, so 
we really had no context about with her background or how she really felt. So this one follows Annie trying to solve a, women, a woman's disappearance. And this is the day before that she decides it's time for me to go capture Aaron. So she goes full Titan mode and goes straight after him. So this episode really delves into Annie's psyche in a way. You get to really understand her on a more intimate level and how she was, she is human. And you kind of get to relate to her on a deeper level. Uh, but this also helps us really see how messed up the social structure is in the safe haven that is these different walls and how different the inner to the outer layers really live. Now, one thing that's really cool that we get to see is that we always knew that Annie was very highly trained. She was very, she was one of the more skilled characters that we really know. And this gets showcased a lot in this. We get to see small little snippets of fight scenes that really showcase her like hand-to-hand -hand combat, but then also get to see moments of her using partial transformation with her Titan abilities and shows how much control she really has. Overall, this, this episode, the story of it was actually pretty interesting. You gotta kinda get to see like the inner underground dark workings of certain things that are going on and gives us more insight into the affairs of the military police, which we never really understood. We just thought they were just a bunch of jerks, pretty much. And obviously it shows how effed up the social system is of the whole world that they grew up and lived in. But the most important part is that we get to understand Annie on a more intimate and make really relatable connections to her and her past. And hopefully she'll spawn out of this crystal popsicle chrysalis thing that she's in and we'll get more out of her. Solid, solid, solid six out of seven. So if you guys have watched these, let me know which episodes are your favorite. Between me, it's the Levi episode. No regrets, no regrets and the Lost Girls episode. And on that one, I hope you guys enjoy season four, part two coming out tomorrow. Be healthy, stay healthy, keep lifting each other. We'll see you next time.